welcome to Gemkim. Now today's video is on liquid state part 6 video where we will learn about the viscosity of liquid state. But before starting if you have not watched liquid state part 5 where we have dealt with the diffusion of gases in order to approach the viscosity please do watch it it will be helpful. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present about this video. Now let us start today's video. Now what do we mean by viscosity? Viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. Therefore, it is not surprising that the viscosity of gases and liquids is measured using flow. Viscosity is typically measured by monitoring the flow of a fluid through a tube with underlying idea that the greater the viscosity, the smaller the flow through the tube. Now, the following equation was derived by Poiseuille to describe flow of a liquid through a round tube under conditions of laminar flow that is regular flow. Delta V by delta T equals to pi r to the power 4 by 8 eta multiplied by P2 minus P1 by X2 minus X1. This is the Poiseuille's equation and we will derive it in this video. Now see, this equation is referred to as Poiseuille's law. In equation 1, that is this one, delta V by delta T represents a volume of fluid delta V that passes through the tube in a specific amount of time delta T and R is the radius of the tube through which fluid flows and is a fluid viscosity. What is the fluid viscosity? This eta is a fluid viscosity, right? And the factor in the parenthesis represents the macroscopic pressure gradient over the tube length. Notice that the fluid flow rate that is this one is dependent on radius of the tube and also inversely proportional to the fluid viscosity. As anticipated, more viscous the fluid, smaller the flow rate, whereas the flow of an ideal gas through a tube is given by delta V by delta T equals to pi r to the power 4 by 16 eta L P0 multiplied by P2 square minus P1 square where L is the length of the tube, P2 and P1 are the pressures at the entrance and exit of the tube respectively and P0 is the pressure at which the volume is measured and is equal to P1 if the volume is measured at the end of the tube. Now we come to the derivation which is important. We consider a tube first. Now see, here in this tube, First, we see the underlying layer and here the fluid flows in faster rate and here the motion or the velocity is slow as one liquid goes towards the ends that is towards the surface of the cylinder. Now previously we have seen what is flask and what is the dvx by dy and eta is a coefficient of viscosity. No more discussions will be done on this. You can see the video. Now, this is the force which is applied for fast motion, that is fast moving. And Fs is for slow moving. Now, we will consider Fs to be as Fr. Okay. Now, When liquid viscosity increases, force increases, whereas when liquid viscosity decreases, force also decreases. Now, this part, this difference which we have taken is taken to be as delta x. Okay, now we have to write it. This part is our delta x, right? Now, FF is written as minus eta 2 pi r delta x dv by dr. Now, this is viscosity coefficient, this is area and this is volume divided by the length that is the small radius. dr is infinitesimally small. Now, we see for the slow moving one that is this one. We can take it also as fr that is while deriving, deriving this one, we will consider this to be as equal to Fr. Okay. Now we see that for slow moving one, 
it is plus eta 2 pi r plus dr delta x dv by dr. Now y plus because this occurs in opposite direction to the fast moving ones. Now see this one the last force which occurs is fp that is pressure difference force equal to delta p into 2 pi r dr. Now fast moving cylinder has a radius of r and the slow moving cylinder has a radius of r plus dr. Now we see that the forces are balanced. So the total amount of all these three forces is equal to zero. Now we have added these all together. Now this term particularly dv by dr in the range of r plus dr can be expanded using Taylor's series. Now since dr is very small, okay, so we take up to second derivative, we will not go farther. So we take it as dv by dr plus dr d square v by dr square. Right. And we have substituted the value of Fp here. Now we see in the next step, we obtain this one as it is and then we expand this together. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4 terms and this one we have taken in the right hand side. Now we will cancel the terms. First this term and this term gets cancelled and this term is neglected. Why is it neglected? This is neglected because there is a presence of dr right? and also delta x. These both are very small and here we see that there is twice dr, dr into dr. So it becomes very very small so it can be neglected easily. Now see we have done this that is neglected this term and we are left with this one. This term should have another dr but because on multiplying this we will get here a dr right for this term. So this have eta common 2 pi r common 2 pi r gets cancelled here and here and we see this one dr and dr also gets can cancelled so we get only this terms right. So, now we need to just reshuffle the things and on reshuffling we get these terms. Now on getting this one from this one we will try to integrate this equation and we get the final equation to be as this part that is dv by dr into r equals to minus r square by 2 eta delta p by delta x plus a right now we will see for the next one that is on obtaining this we take the r in this side now we integrate again to get the value of v right and we get the value of v to be as this one on integration these are mere integrations and derivations two conditions to get a and b we need the a and b if cylinder diameter is considered to be as capital R then at R equals to capital R the volume will be equal to 0 and at R equals to 0 dv by dr equals to 0 that is fast velocity. So a comes to be as 0 from equation 1 and b comes to be as r square by 4 eta delta p by delta x from equation 2. Now the volume at time t comes to be as this one right and for calculating the maximum velocity, we use this. We ignore the small r square. So total volume of liquid flow per unit second is delta v by t, delta t, integration of r0, r square minus small r square by 4 eta, delta p, delta x into 2 pi r dr. Now on doing this simplification of integration, we get this equation. And finally, delta V by delta T equals to delta P pi R to the power 4 by 8 L eta. L is the length of the whole tube. And this is our Poiseuille's equation. So, this much for today. 
Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. Thank you.